Good morning, Bright Church. We're continuing and finishing up our series in the Beatitudes and the Maletitudes. And I wanted to read three passages today, and it's going to come in from a really weird angle. The angle of inheritance, the angle of legacy, what we inherit. Matthew 5.10 Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Matthew 23.29 Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for you build the tombs of the prophets and decorate the tombs of the righteous. In verse 31 So you testify against yourselves that you are the sons of those who murdered the prophets. Fill up then the measure of the guilt of your fathers. And Isaiah 5, 8-9, Woe to those who join house to house, who add field to field until there is no more room. There is an inheritance that someone is preparing, and you are made to dwell alone in the midst of the land. The Lord of hosts has sworn in my hearing, Surely many houses shall be desolate, large and beautiful houses without inhabitant. And here we see the worthless legacy, the worthy uh, the worthless legacy and the worthy inheritance. In the Beatitudes, the inheritance of the persecuted is the kingdom of God. We often talk about the fact that uh, persecution and being ready for it and be rejoicing in it, but the reality of it is we are inheriting something through that persecution. In the Maletitudes, those who don't change from the mistakes of their fathers, and in this case it was persecuting the righteous, will inherit the same life and the same guilt. And in Isaiah, he issues a woe that no matter the prosperity now, no matter how much you think you've escaped that generational curse, that generational sin, an unrighteous life will only inherit emptiness and pass on desolation. We have to come to the realization that our life is not our own. We are the product of all that came before us, and God willing, we will be a foundation for those who come after us. Our life is not our own, and that fact that we inherit and we pass on something, that works for both curses and for blessings. It doesn't just work for bad. If your family history is one that has a legacy of sin, you've taken that on. That is a part of your history. It carries an effect in your life as well, whether you acknowledge it or not. And the sin that you don't acknowledge and deal with in your life may be passed on to your children as well, for them to deal with. With that in mind, it becomes clear why Jesus uses the language and ideas of inheritance when talking about this. Why, why tell the persecuted what they'll inherit? Why tell the persecutors what they've inherited? If you come from a family where generational, generational sin has been prevalent, this warning from Jesus is a call to acknowledge that our present is shaped by our past and our future is shaped by the present. It is a continuous timeline. A family history of, addic of addiction should put you on guard, should make you wary that you've inherited this sin to some degree. And that same sin can take a hold of your life. Using a food for a crutch may have been in your family history. It might even be physically visible. And that is a sin that you need to make sure doesn't take a hold in your life. A history of abuse, not just discipline, but abuse in your family, is a sin that you are inheriting that you need to be wary of so that it doesn't take a hold in your life. Whatever it might be, we all come from families that have some level of dysfunction, some level of sin that is inherited and passed on. For the Pharisees, it was religious dysfunction. The killing of righteous prophets, the killing of those who came preaching God's word. For us, it might be something else. However, in all cases, the question is what we inherit and what we leave behind. If we inherited a history of persecution, of being the persecutors, be wary that you do not continue that same sin. And before us, before you, before me, stands a choice of God and kingdom or persecution and desolation. Those are the two extremes. 
God says, if you will be persecuted for my name's sake, you will inherit the kingdom. In both the Miletitudes and in Isaiah, God says, if you do the persecuting, you will be desolate. If you continue the sin, you will be des uh, desolate. Make a choice in light of the outcomes that are predicted, that are confirmed through years and through lives and through families. The rejection of the way of Jesus can have no other outcome than to follow in the footsteps of those who came before us. But the joy is that aside from the radical transformation of the soul through the redeeming work of Christ, there is no path forward, but there is a path through Him. Through Him there is redemption. Through Him there is a casting off of sin. It doesn't matter if you're predisposed to one sin or another, if you're predisposed to addiction, to eating, to overeating, to drugs, to alcohol, to whatever it is. There is freedom in Christ. And with that, I wanted to conclude that no matter what envelops you, no matter what you inherited, no matter what your parents are like, Jesus calls you to a new life, a life that is free of sin and whose inheritance and whose legacy will be the kingdom of God. God bless and take care.